Good morning. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, my name is Jacob Fry, and I'm the, the chair of uh, this elections committee. It is September uh, 17th, Wednesday, and I'm joined by council members Palmasano, Goodman, uh, Quincy, Yang, Johnson, Glidden, uh, Reich, Bender, Kano, and Gordon. Uh, for this elections committee, we have one item on the agenda for today, and it involves ex expansion of the uh, voting hours for no excuse absentee voting. As many of you know, uh, we saw a dramatic uptick in the number of people that were voting during the primary just about a month ago. And uh, we've been approached by several different community groups noting that if we also expand the, the voting hours for the general election, we could hopefully increase turnout dramatically. Uh, so uh, with that, I will turn it over to our clerk, uh, Casey Carl, who can give us the rundown. Committee, uh, as the chair stated, the proposal to expand service hours seeks to build on efforts to improve service to our voters by increasing opportunity. Staff was directed by Mayor Hodges and Chair Fry to evaluate and report back on options in response to these requests that were received from several community-based organizations advocating for greater ballot access. Under the current schedule, the Elections and Voter Services Division expects to provide approximately 278 service hours during the 46-day absentee voting period. That includes service hours each weekday during the regular business hours, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., as well as additional hours on the two Saturdays just prior to Election Day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The proposal that's been put forward by the mayor and chair Fry targets increases in service hours during the two week period that leads up to election day, including additional service hours for each business day and new service hours on the two Sundays just prior to election day. If approved, the proposal, as outlined in the staff report, would increase the total number of service hours by approximately 10% for a total of 312 hours during the 46 day absentee voting period. That's a total of more than 34 hours than what was already scheduled. And I also would point out that absentee voting period starts this Friday. I've distributed at the dais a calendar view that outlines this. There's also a copy on the overhead for our viewing public. This visually summarizes how the expanded service hours would affect our planned schedule. Um, we've also put a copy of that report in the uh, report that's online. Staff has provided a high-level analysis report of this proposal, primarily focused on two aspects. First, the staffing impact, and second, the potential fiscal impact, which is an estimate based on several assumptions. Again, these evaluations of the staffing and fiscal impacts are provided in more detail in the staff report, circulated with the agenda, and also posted online. Um, as the committee is aware in Minneapolis, we do provide a very different level of service for our absentee voters, which exceeds that which is required by law and is provided in other communities. <clears throat> Starting in 2012, we established a polling place here at City Hall to receive our in-person absentee voters. Under state law, election officials are merely required to provide service in their offices, essentially a front counter exchange. Because the office space that's allocated for elections is insufficient to meet our needs, we've opted to establish a full-scale polling place in the rotunda, which gives maximum support and assistance to our voters who choose to vote absentee. Given that this year also saw the launch of no excuse absentee voting, as the chair pointed out, it's important that we have the proper space and resources to serve our voters. Those resources include election judges to staff the city hall polling place. Staffing the city hall polling place during the final two weeks prior to election is extremely challenging because the permanent staff and the majority of our core seasonal workers are focused on final preparations to ensure a successful election day. Therefore, staff is proposing to implement two shifts to assure adequate coverage. Using two shifts allows for overlap during peak times when voters are likely to arrive and also helps to cover for lunches and breaks. However, because it is impossible to predict turnout from day to day, we also anticipate the need for flexibility in our staffing approach, and therefore we recommend that the elections director be authorized to assign additional election judges to the city hall polling place based on demand. We further recommend that this expansion in voter service hours be considered a test and that recommendations be returned to this committee for its consideration in how service hours might be determined to best meet voters needs in future elections. Staff regularly provides a debriefing after each election cycle and we would plan to include a discussion with analysis and recommendations on this particular issue as part of that larger report. 
With that, and in the interest of the council's schedule, Mr. Chair, I'd stand for any specific questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carl. Before I open it up to questions, I'd like to uh, go ahead and, and move uh, to authorize the proposed expansion in voter service hours and to also authorize the elections director to designate additional staffers as needed to, to sufficiently staff the city hall in person polling place during the 46 day absentee voting period uh, with one uh, minor amendment, which is to expand the Sunday voting hours in the two weeks preceding the election by one. Uh, so that would go from 12 to four at two, 12 to five. So we're moving it from from 12 to 4 and making it 12 to 5. Uh, with that minor amendment and that motion in place, do we have any questions for Mr. Carl? Uh, Council Member Glidden. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Chair, and um, I appreciate the report. I am um, certainly supportive of this um, change to expand uh, the hours of service. Just one thing, um, usually on our um, request for council action, we have an item that says fiscal impact. That's not on the request for um, council action. I do know that um, in this sort of longer attached report, it's it shows um, uh, what I guess I would characterize as an overall small, small uh, fiscal impact, I'm assuming um, since it's not mentioned, it's probably just covered within budget. And I just want to make sure we're kind of aware of how, how that will come forward to us if it needs to in the future. Through the chair, council member Glidden, I appreciate that. Yes, the fiscal impact that we um, worked with the finance department to analyze is relatively small, um, approximately $10,000. And we would anticipate to cover that within allocated budget already within the clerk's department. Um, if we were unable to do that, of course, then we would work with finance to find other means of paying or coming before the council for an allocation of contingency funds if necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Do I have any further questions for Mr. Carl? Uh, I will just add that I think this is a really important step. We're, we're talking about expanding the electorate. We're talking about giving as many people access to voting as possible. And, and as you know, just voting on that Tuesday, November 4th, it, it can at times be very difficult. So this is uh, expanding the no, ag absent, no excuse absentee voting for the 46 days prior to the election. And when we talk about no excuse, it's not just you don't need to provide an excuse. It's also I'm thinking going forward, you have no excuse not to vote. Uh, so we hope to get as many people out there as possible. I want to thank uh, the clerk's office, Mr. Carl, as well as Grace and, and all of the community organizations that came forward to express their desire to increase that, uh, that electorate. Uh, I think this is a very important step. And with that, I will uh, move approval of this motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Yang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, you know, I just had a question with regards to this one. Um, is this going to be kind of like a pilot for this year? And if it works out, I mean, we'll do it for the following years. Or is this going to be kind of something that we're just going to adopt for forever, let's say? That's a very good question and something that we deliberated quite a bit. I'm going to throw this one to Mr. Carl. Mr. Chair, um, the recommendation from staff, which I believe concurs with the parameters provided by policymakers, was to use this as an opportunity to test um, what the expanded service hours would do for our voters with the idea that we would come back um, to discuss a permanent policy that would be applied in all future elections. Do we have any other further questions? I'm, I'm not using speaker management, so if you want to raise your hand or put, put up your tag. Seeing uh, no further questions, I will happily uh, move approval of this item. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those op opposed, say nay. That item has been adopted. Thank you. Uh, as we have no further items on the agenda for today, uh, this meeting is adjourned.